Afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this session on maturing immunization systems, linking learning from COVID-19 and um, uh, routine immunization. In this session, we will talk uh, about real-time monitoring. And we have uh, three interesting speakers with us uh, in the session. We have uh, first out is um, Karin Gauchen from Gavi. Uh, she is senior manager in their digital health information department. Um, she will talk about how uh, uh, Gavi's current outlook and priorities for information system support for immunization and how the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted challenges and also seen highly relevant uh, routine immunization priorities. We have uh, Johannes Dugasa. He is a field epidemiologist from Ethiopia, and he will present a project where they're introducing DHIS2 to monitor vaccine preventable diseases in Ethiopia. And then last but not least, we have Dr. Muwala Baksh Chaudhry. He is a program manager uh, for EPI and member secretary of the COVID-19 vaccination deployment and preparedness core committee in Bangladesh. And he will present their implementation story of DHIS2 um, under measles and rubella campaign in terms of online microplanning, supervision, and real-time monitoring, where they successfully vaccinated over 30 million children earlier this year. Very impressive feat. And I think we can say, as was also discussed in the previous session, that DHIS2 has been expanded to cover many key needs in the immunization space in the, in the, in the past years with over 50 plus countries using DHIS2 for core functions in their vaccine programs. And the COVID-19 vaccine programs have been a key driver for rapid expansion and improvements to the platform. Um, and they're also building on these routine uh, immunization packages uh, under the WHO metadata package framework. And really COVID-19 has put the spotlight on the importance of real-time monitoring uh, and data availability for action uh, at the time that the data is most relevant. But of course, this isn't only relevant for COVID. It's highly relevant for all other immunization programs as well. So um, in this session, I hope we can sort of illuminate this from different perspectives. Uh, a couple of practical information before we get started. And let me just change slides. You can ask uh, questions to the presenters uh, either here on the chat uh, on Zoom. And also we encourage you to continue the conversation in our community of practice. We will share the links to that in the chat. Uh, all these links are on the SCED session and, and also here. And if we would love for it to be, uh, we would love for it to be interactive as well and open to questions. I, I think we will have time for that in the, in the end. So with that, I will give the word to Karin. Okay, uh, good afternoon, good morning to everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me and see me, yeah, it's okay. So I'm uh, very happy to be here and um, really wanted to, to, to thank the University of Oslo and all the HIS for organizing, I know the, the conference is uh, really expected every year. So uh, I'm happy to be here. I just want to share my screen and give a few words. Um, just one second. Uh, oh, sorry. Voila. Is that big enough, Anne? Everyone can see? Perfect. OK. So, uh, you know, Gavi is a global alliance uh, for uh, vaccination and immunization, and uh, we have been working with the uh, University of Oslo, WHO, and UNICEF, and all the partners to uh, work for routine immunization. As you have seen, there have been also a lot of work on COVID-19, um, uh, and uh, now with COVID-19 vaccination specifically. So, just quickly, we will look on you know, we will watch what were the achievements of the recent year and the collaboration together. We will uh, pass rapidly on what uh, has happened for COVID-19 surveillance and vaccination and, and just a few words on the, how we could look forward together. So on the achievement, um, this is just a reference. You, you are all now aware. You can uh, 
uh, click on that uh, uh, link and, and go to the DHIS2 doc um, org immunization platform and you will see all the different uh, packages. So you will see um, everything that is available uh, at the, you know, and to be used by all the countries and the partner to help uh, strengthening the immunization program. And uh, in terms of uh, result, we put a few numbers, and, and of course, you know, the, the results are, are way uh, beyond just numbers, but how countries are using the data, how they are using those data to improve the routine immunization. But uh, obviously, uh, for the past uh, two, three years now, the immunization program are really uh, making uh, uh, progress and in, in taking the best from, from DHIS2 is a lot of work. So you can find you know, some reference on all the, the, the uptake of the different immunization related module. And um, you know, kind of a, a simple example of this achievement is that in a couple of uh, less than three years, there's been a lot of countries who have stopped their parallel system for immunization information system and have been um, uh, integrated immunization system into the national health information system and, and DHIS2. So in the countries that Gavi supports, uh, majority of the countries are, are fully integrated into uh, DHIS2 for the immunization information system. Of course, a uh, country can choose the system they want, uh, and um, we are not uh, giving any preference, uh, but we are just you know, seeing uh, a clear uptake uh, on the HIS2 platform. For COVID-19, uh, there's been several sessions. You have seen that, uh, just putting back again, uh, the link for the website where you can find also information for both aspects, the surveillance, uh, to monitor how the epidemic is uh, evolving and on the um, uh, vaccination side, because now COVID-19 has become a, a vaccine preventable disease. So we have all the, pack the package for uh, vaccination as well. And you have seen description of all those packages. Um, and you know the uptake. Um, the uptake on the surveillance module has been very rapid and uh, is a kind of opening really the door for, for that new surveillance package that is now available on the HIS24 vaccine preventable disease and integrated package and where uh, COVID-19 uh, fits as well. And um, now for the vaccination of against uh, the COVID-19 disease, uh, you have seen how the country are picking up and we hope that of course um, this uh, uh, will be merging and, and effort will be done for supporting the integration into the routine uh, immunization system. So just a few words, um, you have um, had already one, uh, one hour on all those uh, you know, new way uh, of uh, working and, and going. I just wanted to, to remind everyone what are the, the priority in the digital health information area for Gavi and our new strategy uh, called Gavi 5.0, the strategy that is uh, uh, now started for five years. And, and this is very important for us because clearly countries are using DHS2 and DHS2 is one of the core um, piece of the ecosystem around the information system for immunization. And one way or another, either directly, either with a module or either with, um, via interoperability, the HIS2 has a, the role to play in all our six uh, priorities, uh, which are you know, how to identify and reach the zero dose and under immunized children. Uh, we have also a lot on how to empower district health manager and making sure you know, they can access the data easily. We have seen, we are going to see, sorry, um, how uh, DHS2 can support what we call the real time planning and monitoring of immunization campaigns. And also a lot of things um, is happening on the ELMIS side and how uh, DHS2 can facilitate, you know, the visibility of uh, data from the health facility level and have some interoperability with ELMIS. There will be a lot of session on that. And, um, we have uh, DHIS2, the, the tracker, the electronic immunization registry that help us, of course, on the 
reducing uh, the, the, the defaulter, the one with not all the, sorry for that. And uh, we have, um, sorry, it's just a proof that this is direct live. And then we have um, also the HIS2 that can obviously help around the surveillance information system. And all of this in uh, Gavi with a new uh, strategy is, um, also link with the innovation strategy and this link with our COVID-19 vaccine delivery uh, strategy. So this is a way forward, DHS2 has space everywhere and we are really calling upon all of you to, to help uh, innovating in, in DHS2 to, to support all our priority. And the, the most important thing is that where well, we, we, we came together and we were very happy for, to have University of Oslo and the HISP organizing this session is that obviously the, the pandemic and the way to roll out a world, world, worldwide campaign for, for a vaccine have shown us like very uh, clear needs that are coming uh, on a very acute way. Uh, you have seen the session on the adverse effect following immunization, the link with VGBase, and, and we have seen that it's a huge effort that is needed to, to give uh, uh, people confidence back uh, into the vaccines and, and reassure them. And for that is having a very transparent system reporting adverse effect following immunization is, is, is really so important. And um, so for COVID-19, for all other vaccines and a lot of vaccines you know, are, are coming uh, to the way uh, of, the, of the country we, we support. And this piece is, is really um, important and I should not just you know, set aside, but become a, a core piece of information system. And, and we have seen that DHS has to have real role to play there. Another area, uh, and, and you talk uh, about it, I think, uh, already, and this, this is going to continue, is well, not just here to, to, to help country to report. Of course, you know, we need to, to have country reporting uh, at the global level and, and all of that. But what is important is countries have really to take a critical decision uh, on how to um, run the, the, the vaccination, how to optimize the use of vaccine, knowing that uh, uh, specialist vaccines that are set in a kind of emergency period, it's a very short uh, expiry date. So you really need to know where is your stock, but in the same time, you also need to monitor rumors and, and monitor the needs and the demand for vaccine in the same time. And you need to make sure you have all your uh, vaccination team ready uh, to vaccinate uh, at the right place with the vaccines. So you see that it's an important uh, volume of insights and not just data, but insights that have to come together and need to be triangulated and need to be made available for decision maker in a kind of really uh, real time uh, basis. So this has been um, really um, critical for the first six months of the rollout of the vaccines. And we see a lot of demand from the country uh, telling us how can I have all those data, you know, in any way and I can triangulate those data and take decision. So, and, and, and we have some examples that are coming from, from uh, uh, countries using DHIS to uh, demonstrate that. And is also coming uh, with that notion of, uh, real-time planning and monitoring. So this was really done and developed for, for the campaign, the vaccination campaign, also the, the LLIN campaign, all the campaign. But we see that, for, for example, for COVID-19 vaccination is a kind of campaign mode, but on a very long duration. Uh, so we have new mechanism uh, to be put in place. We need to have reactive information system and DHS2 can have that reactivity, can absorb um, more um, um, uh, data collection point, more sites uh, in, in one go, and can also really uh, play its role bringing uh, information on a real time manner. So a lot, uh, a lot of learning from COVID-19 that we need to apply to routine immunization. And just my last point for countries uh, who would like to be supported by, by Gavi uh, for the DHIS2. 
uh, I just put that summary here. Uh, we have two kind of uh, uh, mechanism. So for all what we call the country eligible to Gavi, um, this is on the, that column. You can really um, um, contact uh, your senior country manager. You know how to 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 work with Gavi, and there is contract uh, grounds that are in place between Gavi and the University of Oslo. Uh, for technical assistance, uh, this is available, and all the operational costs, like uh, if you need to organize training, uh, buy equipment, internet connectivity, server cost, and all of that, this is possible to, uh, to support that via the HSS grant you have. And um, now, beyond routine immunization and the 57 GAVI eligible countries, we have also uh, GAVI as part of the, of the COVAX and GAVI can support the, uh, what we call the AMC countries, so it goes up to 92. So if those countries have uh, specific needs uh, related to COVID-19, the surveillance or the, the vaccination, Piece. And we have also a grant that is in place. Country can can ask for it. Uh, we have uh, this is for technical assistance and for operational cost. Um, we have a, a new grant that is on the way coming uh, called CDSS COVID nineteen delivery system transferring, where country can request some support for uh, DHIS to be there. In any case, always keep you uh, Gavi senior country manager informed. Because the AMC country uh, can also discuss with UNICEF, with managing that piece, always coordinate with uh, WHO country office and regional office, and of course with your implementing partner, uh, the East. And for country uh, who are listening and want to use an analysis system, they can also ask for specific support to, to the SEM. My last word will be really a big, big thank you for all the team. Um, the, you have always been a, a very committed partners uh, to Gavi, to the countries beyond, uh, you know, the, your usual commitment for routine immunization. We really saw uh, what has been done for, for the COVID-19 pandemic as a surveillance and now the vaccination and really a uh, big uh, bravo, big thank you for all the support. Well, I'm, I'm ending over to you. Thank you uh, so much, Corinne, for your continued support and uh, positivity and uh, really helping us moving this along. It's uh, highly appreciated. Um, our next presenter is uh, Johannes from uh, Ethiopia. Are you ready? I will give the floor to you. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Annie. And uh, let me share my screen with uh, participants. So, uh, Thank, thank you very much, uh, Annie, for facilitation. And uh, I would like to appreciate the prior speaker just to give for giving us an oversight on uh, what has been done from the Gavi side in enhancing the uh, effective vaccination against uh, COVID-19. Uh, mine is just uh, optimizing a DHS to platform for vaccine preventable case-based reporting. Uh, just we are trying to uh, trying to pave the way for the generation of evidence that will be used as uh, just to roll out or to expand the DHA to, to utilization for VPDs. Uh, yeah, as you know that uh, the public health surveillance is uh, very very uh, necessary for each and every public health measure uh, to be taken. Among that, the effective mobilization is one of the public health measures that needs to be depend on the public health surveillance or uh, or it needs to be guided by the high quality data generated from the public health surveillance. Uh, for the routine immunization, we may not need the surveillance from the, uh, the data from the surveillance, but uh, during the outbreak response or when we are undertaking reactive uh, campaign or immunization against some specific diseases, we need to be highly guided by the evidence generated from the public health surveillance. We need to target specific uh, age group. We need to target a specific geographic area or just we need to select a specific antigen for that uh, disease. So all those information need to come from the public health surveillance and. Uh, I can say that the public health surveillance is uh, 
just a cornerstone or evidence for the effective uh, immunization. Uh, so uh, just I will uh, offer you some pointers on the current public health surveillances uh, in Ethiopia. Just I have already mentioned that public health surveillance is very, very uh, crucial for the, every public health measures to be taken, targeting one or more specific diseases. And in Ethiopia, there is uh, like 23 diseases or events that have been included and then there's a national surveillance system and they have been selected based on different uh, criteria. Uh, among those priority diseases, the measles, polio, and the neonatal tetanus are the primarily vaccine preventable diseases. And uh, just they are uh, using the same uh, route or uh, channel with other uh, diseases. And when we see data flow, the data came from the community health facility, Warada zone region to the federal level. Uh, just to contextualize, Warada is to mean the district and uh, uh, region is uh, the one that corresponds with provinces and the zone is intermediate admin structure that is found between the district and the provinces. So it flows such, uh, uh, then just uh, I'm talking about the vaccine preventable disease that we are under the national surveillance system. and. Uh, uh, peculiarly, those vaccine preventable diseases are under the elimination of, of or the eradication program. For instance, neonatal tenants and the measles were under the elimination and uh, polio were under the eradication program. And uh, due to the inherent nature of those program, there is huge demand for high quality data uh, across every uh, pillars of the responses. So, uh, when we came to the surveillance procedure for vaccine preventable disease in Ethiopia, uh, just un unlike that of most of the diseases or events under surveillance, those vaccine preventable diseases depends on individual case by case uh, reporting. So uh, once we encounter one vaccine preventable disease, we need to undertake individual uh, case investigation and we need to fill uh, detailed information on case-based reporting format. And, uh, we need to feel just to, uh, for instance, if we uh, if one case is reported at uh, catchment facilities down on the ground, after the investigation, the case-based reporting format needs to be filled in five, four to five copies, and each copy should be uh, delivered to the previous admin level uh, that I mentioned, like uh, Warada zone, region, and the federal levels. That seems very tricky and uh, tiresome for the health workers that we are, uh, that is uh, working it out on the ground. Then after filling the case-based reporting format, there is sample collection and the shipment to the referral uh, laboratories. And unfortunately, the referral laboratories are either found at the regional level or at the national levels. And uh, once the sample was delivered to the laboratory and uh, tested, there should be the result linkage. So the result should be sent back to the, uh, the site that initially reported the vaccine preventable disease. And uh, uh, those all steps need uh, extended period of time from my experience. They can take uh, more than a week. And if the reported case is confirmed to be vaccine preventable disease, uh, within this period of time, the outbreak can uh, propagate and uh, leads to uh, increase the number of cases, deaths, and the disabilities. So uh, when we came to the pitfall with the current vaccine preventable disease case-based reporting, uh, it is manual-based, it is tiresome, and uh, amenable to errors. So uh, as I've mentioned, each copy should be uh, delivered to uh, Warada zone region and the national levels. And the most of the time, from my experience, the copies are uh, available at the facility level and at the federal level. Those intermediate levels don't have any copies with them. So uh, it carries sig very significant data quality gap, incomplete data, and uh, discrepancies among the data, uh, the data among different levels. So the number that you get at the facility is different from the other data, different from the zone, region, and so on. Uh, there is longer durations than expected. Uh, testing, communicating result back to the sending, sending site takes longer so that we, ca we are allowing the outbreak to propagate without any uh, intervention. So uh, if that happens, uh, there is delayed initiation of response, increased case, deaths and the disabilities, and uh, ultimately there is 
uh, wastage of resource, uh, financial, human resource, and uh, specifically vaccine. So uh, there have been uh, many efforts taken by the Minister of Health to tackle the issues with the data qualities. And uh, as a part of that, uh, Ethiopian Ministry of Health in collaboration with his partner has uh, customized the DHS2 tracker to back up the aggregate data. Uh, just that is targeting the aggregate data, uh, the counts produced from the surveillance. That means this DHS tracker does, doesn't accommodate uh, individual case by case uh, reporting of vaccine preventable disease. Hence, uh, the vaccine preventable disease needs sophisticated and real time surveillance tool that paves the way for strong monitoring and evaluation uh, prospect. And uh, yes, we believe that DHS would be one of the tools that can at least pave the way for the a strong monitoring and evaluation uh, framework. So uh, this is a background uh, with regard to the surveillance in countries. And when we came to the initiation for this uh, project, there is what we call GIGS, Growing Expertise in Health and Health Knowledge and Skills. Uh, that was uh, provided in Ethiopia, uh, coordinated by ICAP and the CDCs. And uh, this type of applied project-based informatics training uh, targeting the health workers uh, to help them use the DHS and other health information system. And uh, this uh, abstract or project that I'm presenting is an ongoing project that we are uh, under implementation primarily as a part of uh, learning process for the trainees and secondarily just uh, to optimize the DHIS2 uh, platform to, uh, for the vaccine preventable diseases. So uh, when we came to the objectives of this project, uh, as I have already mentioned, it is an ongoing project uh, that aims to optimize DHIS2 platform for vaccine preventable disease, case-based surveillance that we are primarily lacking uh, in the current practice of the surveillance and uh, just to generate quantifiable information for proper monitoring and evaluation uh, prospects. And specifically, uh, the objective is to develop the comprehensive requirement document. We don't have a requirement document to customize the DHS to tracker for BPDs. So we are going to uh, develop a requirement document. We are going to customize the DHS to per the develop the requirement document pilot and then uh, uh, ultimately producing uh, genuine evidence for the Ministry of Health and other stakeholders that may be partner on operational feasibility of using DHS for uh, vaccine preventable disease on, uh, in an umbrella, uh, just blanket approach. Uh, so uh, through the process we are, uh, following the phased approach. And the first phase is the DSC review and the gap analysis. Uh, we have already uh, done the DSC review and the gap analysis on the relevant documents related to the DHS2 implementation in Ethiopia. And if you found out that there have been nothing done so far uh, in uh, utilizing DHS2 for the vaccine preventable disease. And that seems uh, very difficult because we are uh, going to start from the scratch. So we need to develop the requirement document to outline what type and uh, uh, specification of DHIS to are uh, to be used for the vaccine preventable disease. That may be very challengeful, but we are trying to uh, implement that one. The second thing is customization of DHIS to, uh, DHIS to tracker for BPDs. So once the requirement document is in place and everyone agrees that this is the one, uh, to be used, we are going to customize DHS per the requirement document. Then we are going to select the specific district or health facilities, uh, and we are going to pilot the developed DHS to tracker for vaccine preventable disease. Along that, as a part of uh, tracking the improvements, just we are going to use key performance indicator specifically for surveillance to uh, track whether the surveillance system is uh, improving or not. And just we are also going to support the health worker working at the, those selected or identified facility. And finally, we are uh, going to 
generate the evidence for full ex scale expansion. This is some sort of project and we cannot uh, implement on uh, as a part of the blanket coverage. But we are going to deliver some important evidences to roll out the DHS2 uh, tracker for VPD uh, surveillances. Uh, those are the mid major planned or on pipeline activities. Uh, just the baseline or the uh, the initiative is the GIGS training. Uh, it was given on December 20. Just after that, there is a group formation from the Ministry of Health, Regional Health Bureaus, and a partner. And finally, we uh, selected the study projects, and we are, we have developed the proposal, developed and uh, submitted to the. ICAP Ethiopia and the mentors we are already uh, assigned. And uh, subsequently, we are going to uh, develop uh, a requirement document. There may be a CLR workshop for customization in that every stakeholders will be part and a part, uh, part of the task. Then there may be orientation document preparation and the test scenario development. Uh, there is testing. After testing, if we see something that need amendment, we are going to uh, make uh, minor amendment to the DHS to tracker. There is uh, final pre-piloting, final validation, uh, implementation plan development, and finally we are going to pilot on select districts and uh, uh, health facilities. So, uh, as output outcome or impacts of the project. Uh, Primarily, just as initially described, the training will have sufficient knowledge and the skill that will enable the standardization of the public health surveillance. Specifically, uh, they will at least uh, make themselves some familiar on uh, using DHS2 for surveillance purposes. There may be well designed requirement documents so that everybody who, who wants to expand those, these DHS may uh, use as a source document. Uh, for rolling out, uh, there is there may be customized DHS to tracker. Uh, there, then ultimately, we are expecting to receive real time data from the uh, selected reporting unit. Uh, finally, just uh, we are anticipating to have improved quality of data that is from the availability, completeness, timeliness, accuracy, and uh, from the consistency. Improved turnaround time for test suspected sample. Uh, improved the data use for decision making and the prompt and the timely response to outbreak uh, are anticipated uh, result from this uh, projects. So, uh, in fact, uh, this is an ongoing project, and uh, we need to work hard to uh, achieve those anticipated outcome or uh, project. But we are striving to make it happen. Uh, this is all I have to talk. Uh, thank you very much, and over to Ivani. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Johannes, for your interesting uh, presentation. I'm looking forward to following this project going uh, forward. Um, I will now give the word to uh, Dr. Chadri uh, in Bangladesh uh, to talk about the immunization uh, campaign that they have been managing. Over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. You, you have about 20 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Slides. Can you see my slides? Perfect. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon and good morning, everybody. Beforehand, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude for inviting me as a speaker at this prestigious global platform. Through my presentation, I will try to provide you a brief idea about how Bangladesh has implemented online microplanning and real-time monitoring during its successful MR campaign 2020 by using DHIS2, despite of a plethora of challenges posed by ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. The current EPI system is using DHIS2 in terms of case-based data capturing as well as aggregated data reporting. As part of case-based data capture, we are conducting cold chain equipment tracking, implementing immunization e-tracking system alongside maintaining AFP, VPD, and AFI surveillance system. On the other hand, infant and women immunization coverage report with 
vaccine and logistic management information system are being done as part of aggregated data reporting. Management information system wing was established in Directorate General of Health Services under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in 2009. Since then, EPI has been using this platform extensively. After that, in 2011, DHS2 implementation started up to district level. In 2013, routine EPI reporting implemented, and in 2014, vaccine and logistic stock reporting in DHIS2 initiated. In 2015, vaccine and logistic reporting implemented for whole country. In 2016, cold chain application in DHIS2 implemented VLMIS implemented, sorry. In 2017, monitoring dashboard on EPA supply chain and cold chain system implemented. In 2019, DPD surveillance implemented immunization e-tracker initiated. Despite of a plethora of challenges caused especially by ongoing pandemic, we had to conduct the MR campaign 2020 to address a number of issues which are Bangladesh conducted last MR catch-up campaign in 2014, 85 to 95 of children uh, received first dose and 80 to 85% received second dose of MR vaccine from 2016 to 2019. Surveillance data indicated measles incidence increased from 1.6 per million in 2015 to 29 per million in 2019. Similarly, number of lab confirmed measles outbreak increased from four in 2015 to 82 in 2019. Due to COVID-19 pandemic situation, Bangladesh rescheduled postponed MR from 12 December 2020 to 3 February 2021 with revised strategies. Before MR campaign 2020, we used to have paper-based microplanning for both routine EPI and supplementary immunization activities. For monitoring purpose, we used to conduct in-person visits to the campaign sites, but this time we choose to use the pre-existing DHIS2 online platform for microplanning and real-time monitoring for following reasons. Government's mandate on sector-wise digitalization ensure overall quality of the campaign, ensure equitable high coverage through close monitoring of achievement against target by session fixing actual target as per microplan, continuous monitoring the quality of campaign and immediate action to rectify and improve. Find out missed children and ensure vaccination of all missed children through mop-up session. Daily vaccine and logistic management plan and monitoring vaccine and logistic stock. Online microplan and real-time monitoring help to conduct quality campaign when physical monitoring options was very limited due to COVID-19 pandemic situation. Major partners, technical assistance and implementation, EPI, DGHS, GAVI, UNICEF, WHO. System development and server maintenance, MIS, DGHS, UNICEF, University of Oslo and DHIS2 community. Results behind Regions, regions behind picking DHIS2 for real-time monitoring where since 2013, EPA is using DHIS2 for routine EPA reporting, vaccine and logistic management, and cold chain equipment inventory. Well-trained personnel on use of DHIS2 at all level, field list of our familiar with reporting using DHIS2. Organization unit required for MR campaign planning and reporting are already exist in DHS2. Plan to use the same platform of routine EPA microplan for MR campaign planning and reporting. As part of real time monitoring, we did the following activities online microplan, daily vaccination reporting, including vaccine and logistic use, 
session supervision through Android app, house to house visit by first line supervisor through Android app, and rapid convenient monitoring, RCM, that is RCM by second line supervisor through Android apps. As I have mentioned before that, this campaign has proved to, a, to be a successful one. Now I would like to elaborate the achievement. You can see the, sorry, monitor daily coverage against the target at all level and provided feedback. Identified areas of missed children and conducted mop-up sessions. Monitored and addressed session quality issues. Identified issues and children for routine immunization. You can see the MR campaign dashboard in the slide. Results, children vaccinated. 36 million approximately, number of sessions supervised, 239,501, household visits conducted, 178,704, rapid convenience monitoring survey conducted, 19,603, missed children identified for routine doses, 119,581. On microplan de data set include vaccination site and date, target children, vaccinator, supervisor, volunteer, and porter, name and mobile number. Total 402,679 microplan data set, rural 331,128, and urban 71,544 used. Number two, vaccine and logistic management, session-wise vaccine and logistic planning. Number three, vaccination report, daily coverage, vaccine and logistic used and wastes. Next. This time, real-time decision-making and planning of corrective actions were possible and national level managers were able to observe the campaign status up to the lowest unit. Supervision. Observe quality and qualitative aspect by supervision apps, session, session observation, household visit apps, coverage and missed children. Rapid convenience monitoring apps, quality, coverage, missed children, and community awareness. <laughs> And we can observe these apps work both online and offline to cover hard to reach area and no network areas also. All national and subnational managers use these Android apps for campaign supervision and monitoring. Daily analysis of supervision and monitoring data help local and national managers to ensure quality and coverage of the campaign. Previously, all checklists and forms were paper-based, so no scope for real-time analysis and decision-making. You can see the picture here. So this is the picture of solution apps. This is a slide for planning. Stakeholders consultation for consensus building, ideas and ag agreement among EPI and MIS tool development, field testing, training guidelines finalized. National core team formed with expert from EPI, MIS, UNICEF, and WHO. Training of all personnel on online microplan, VLMIS, reporting, supervision, and RCM at all level. Three tutorial video developed for training purpose, organized refresher training on revised tools during Rescheduled of campaign due to COVID-19. Lessons learned. Existing technology DHS tool can be robust platform to strengthening national e-health and management information system. Government ownership and support from all sector and partners is key. User-friendly apps, comprehensive interactive training, and motivation of the user can lead technology-based innovation 
without providing additional devices. DHS2 Android apps can be used for large scale implementation, dedicated technical team required for continuous troubleshooting, server and system maintenance, technology based real time system supported intensive monitoring to achieve result despite pandemic. Challenges. Next, please. Challenges. Capacity of some agent workers to use new technology, shortage of dedicated person for data entry at subnational level, subnational capacity to provide software and server related support. Successes, strong leadership and commitment from national level, successfully introduced all six innovations like microplan, supervision apps, household monitoring apps, RCM, VLMI apps, and reporting system. Completed campaign maintenance quality and achieved a remarkable coverage of 104% despite of COVID-19 pandemic. Multi-stakeholder involvement, especially University of Oslo, DHIS2 community, and MIS DHIS2, and his Bangladesh also. And additional missed children reached with vaccination building confidence to introduce technology-based innovation. Before I ending to my presentation, I want to thank University of Oslo, WHO, UNICEF, and his Bangladesh also. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Dr. Chaudhry. Um, I would like to uh, give the floor if there are any questions in the audience to any of these two projects. Any questions? No. If not, then I will uh, I will ask a question to uh, to the Bangladesh team. Um, with your experience now on uh, on monitoring this uh, this campaign uh, real time, do you have what kind of advice do you have to others wanting to do the same, um, either for COVID vaccination campaigns that are happening uh, <laughs> right now, uh, but also immunization campaigns for more routine immunization? Do you have advice to others? Actually, from the experience of MR campaign, there's a real-time monitoring and other things. So we can use this idea in the COVID-19 uh, also. And we have a plan, uh, other than COVID-19, we have a plan to introduce this type of innovations in the routine immunization in Bangladesh. Over. Okay. Other, other, other country can also follow uh, our experience, uh, which we are doing in the uh, uh, MR campaign. And they can reach you on the COP, the community of practice. Do you have a page there where people can post their questions? Um, so those also watching this in a recording can also find, uh, find the Bangladesh team here and also the Ethiopian um, projects that uh, Johannes presented. So if there are no, yes. more no more questions or comments from our speakers, Anything you would like to add before we close? No? Then I think we will close this session uh, and we will see you again uh, tomorrow. Martin, uh, are there any expert lounges now? You can stop the recording perhaps. Uh, sorry, uh, no, I didn't see any questions in the expert lounge. Um...